we have it this is my absolute dream supercar this is a 2015 Ferrari F12 that I've been fortunate enough blessed enough to be able to own for the past eight months if you follow along in this channel you've seen a bunch of videos on this car already but one video I haven't done yet is a full comprehensive review and I wanted to wait until I had owned the car for a considerable amount of time and eight months in the supercar world is actually a very very long time most people who own a car like this actually trade it in or get something else within that time so in today's video i'm going to do my best to try to relay what it's like to own a car like this and also of course the most important thing what it's like when you get inside the car and what it's like to drive a ferrari f12 we're of course going to cover the good things and also the bad things although the good things by far overweigh the negatives. And first thing is first, we're of course gonna talk about what's under the hood. The most important thing of a Ferrari F12. So this is a 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V12 producing 731 horsepower and 509 pound-feet of torque. Now we're gonna talk more about the engine while we're doing the driving portions of the review, but it's actually been tuned and I don't know exactly <laughs> how much horsepower it's putting down to the ground or it has crank because we do have a new exhaust and when we got the new exhaust we got a tune and they added a little uh, surprise power for me so I'm guessing it's around 770 or 780 crank and yeah I mean the, the power that it has is just, it's just out of this world. Now the gentleman that owned this car prior to me buying it, I'm the second owner, he checked every box specifically for the carbon fiber. So the whole engine bay is just covered in carbon fiber parts. Now I've heard that th this cost around $26,000. And yes, I know it's an obnoxious amount of money just for carbon fiber that doesn't really do anything except for looking pretty. But I am not complaining whatsoever. But one little gripe that I have here with a car that costs $420,000 plus dollars brand new is that Ferrari cannot use stainless steel uh, little screws here. So it kind of kills the looks of the engine bay when you open it up. And yeah, I mean, I should have probably wiped this down with a little water stains and stuff here. But look at these screws. No stainless steel. So they're rusty. And you know, if you want to be picky, like I am, especially with a car like this, something like this, you're just left scratching your head. Why would Ferrari not use stainless steel screws? But besides that, look at this. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. Such a dream come true to have a naturally aspirated V12 from Ferrari. Now the F12 is also the last model in the Ferrari lineup that was designed together with Panini Farina. Just take a look at the lines of this beautiful car. And just the aerodynamic features of this car is not just functional and practical, of course, they're gorgeous. Look at this air bridge that starts on each side of the hood. So the air travels and goes through right here and I can actually stick my hand through and then all across the side of the car for massive amounts of downforce. She is big booty Judy. 79 inches wide from rear tire to rear tire. And while we're back here, we have to mention this. Bit of a signature thing in my reviews is that I check the cargo space in the back. 
Now, this is a Ferrari. It's an Italian supercar. And I'm a six foot two, 215 pound, bald Swedish man. And I almost fit in there. So we got 11.3 cubic feet of cargo space right here. If you fold this down, there's an extra shelf right here. So combined cargo space in a Ferrari F12 is over 17 cubic feet. Take that soccer moms. So the F12 is Ferrari's GT car, meaning it's a grand tourer. It's not only gorgeous, it's not that it just has a V12 with over 700 horsepower. It's not that it's just the best sounding car in the world, which we will soon demonstrate if you have a proper exhaust. It's also practical. Now, since I bought the car in May of last year, it's actually looking a little different now since we've done a couple modifications. This is what my car looked like when it was stock. The first uh, modification that we did, which uh, in all honesty wasn't all that popular, was this little carbon fiber spoiler. I love it. I think it looks absolutely great and it kind of enhances the rear end of the car. Now the second mod, if we zoom in here, you might be able to see the springs. They are from Novitec AKA made by KW, but uh, we lowered the car about an inch. Most Italian supercars, they sit kind of high and uh, it almost looks like your front end lift is up. So we took care of that. Now I do have a front end lift on this car, so I haven't really had to worry about scraping or anything like that. The second upgrade that we did was these beautiful wheels from my friends in Miami, Velos Design Works. We got 22s in the rear and 21s up front. So we got 255 30 diameter tires, 21s that is and then 335, 25, 22 in the rear. Now, one thing that is definitely stock <laughs> are the carbon ceramic discs. These are 17 inch up here. They are enormous and uh, they work really, really well. Another cool thing that the F12 has up front here are these cooling ducts that will actually open and close on their own whenever the brakes need cooling. But my favorite modification of all mods I've done to all the cars I own and have made videos about on my channel, the F-150, two C63s, we have a Raptor as well, and we've just done a lot of modifications, but nothing, nothing comes close to the straight piped exhaust from Frequency Intelligent that we installed on the car about two weeks ago. And before we take it out on the road, <laughs> we have to listen to this. Rip. So it comes with this really cool remote. So what you can actually do is close the valves. <laughs> And then the car pretty much sounds like it did when it was stock, but push the button again. <laughs> uh, it's just the best sound in the world. Yeah, I mean, the sound of this car is just from another planet, and we're gonna hear a lot more of that here very, very soon. But before we jump inside, I'm gonna talk about one thing that's actually a pretty big issue on these F12s here. And I mentioned it, I did a dedicated video on this, and that is actually corrosion of paint, as you might be able to see right here. So these are obviously air vents to let out heat. And for, for some reason, in uh, the production stages of this car, uh, some of the cars, they had problems in the actual metal where uh, it wasn't prepped properly or whatever it was. And then, uh, you know, after painting everything, after a few years, it'll start corroding around here. I have it on each side. See this? I mean, ugly looking little spot that pops up there and all around the lines here of the actual air vent. So just in a few days, I'm actually dropping the car off and it's gonna get repainted. Not the whole car, but it's gonna get repainted and that's gonna be taken care of and Ferrari is actually covering that. So they are acknowledging that there is a problem on the F12. Now for the 458s, I've heard they can get it here around the wheel well. I don't have it, at least not that I've noticed yet. It's only around these 
ear ducts here. I mean, the moral of the story is it doesn't matter how expensive and beautiful and awesome it sounds, how great it is to drive, it's not a perfect car. I mean, it has its issues. We'll talk more about little things when we're driving the car, but this right here, it's a pretty major issue. I'm just glad that it's actually gonna be taken care of. But okay, let's jump inside. And the interior of this specific F12 that I own is actually why I bought it. I wanted the red interior. I specifically did not want a typical Rosso Corsa exterior, the typical Ferrari red. So when I found this one white on red, the combination is just perfect. Now, these are the uh, racing seats from Ferrari. You can get different types of seats as well. They're called the comfort seat. You can get heated seats and so on. But uh, with that being said, these racing seats are probably the most comfortable performance slash racing seats that I've ever had. They're not as stiff as they were in my C63. And uh, I mean, just look at them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now the backrest is power, but everything else is manual. You have a little lever here. You have a pump lever here if you wanna go up and down. Carbon, of course. We got carbon sill plates right here. Carbon in the door panel. We have a button here for your trunk and this is for the gas cap. And then we step into the cockpit. So the center bridge is carbon fiber. Up here by the dash, this is carbon fiber as well. We got a carbon fiber steering wheel, carbon fiber shift paddles. And I actually forget what this piece here is called, but yeah, also carbon fiber. And I almost forgot before we jumped in, the back of the seats, yep, you guessed it, carbon fiber. So on the Ferrari F12, everything, pretty much everything is controlled from the steering wheel. We have three buttons right here on the center bridge. This is for reverse. This is if you wanna have the transmission in auto or manual. And this stands for power start. In other words, launch control. And then right here we have our window controls. So we're gonna start her up here and uh, the F12 gets the classic red key, which I've dropped a couple times, so it's a little scratched up here. But yeah, very classic looking Ferrari key. I mean, it's not a smart key fob or anything, but I don't really care to be honest with you. We got unlock, lock, and then the trunk popper button here, but we're gonna start her up and you do that by sticking the key in the ignition. And then there's tons of chimes and beeping, very annoying. But then you got the start button here, which is only a start button, it's not a stop button. So if you want to turn the car off, you just turn the key and take the key out. <laughs> I love this. And every time you start the car up, you get a check engine light for about 10 seconds. And it's basically like a system check to make sure that everything is okay and then it disappears after just a few seconds. There we go. So like I said, everything is on the steering wheel. We have our horn button right here on each side. And then we have our turn signals right here. We have our light switch. And this button is actually for the uh, adaptive suspension. So if you push it, we get bumpy road mode. So basically it softens up the shocks. It goes from stiff to less stiff. And then we have our windshield wiper controls right here and then we have the Manatino. So we have different driving modes in the F12. This is wet. I've used this one time just to try it out when it was raining really, really hard, but that's the only time I've really driven the car. And obviously, since it was raining so hard, I didn't really push it. I didn't notice that much of a difference. But then we have Sport. We have Race, which is uh, the mode where I usually keep it. And basically, uh, the traction control, it lets you slip a little bit, but then it still grabs it. This is the optimal setting for if you're tracking the car. And then we have CT off, which turns traction control off. Doesn't really allow drifting though. If you wanna do that and be completely on your own and you're an extremely experienced driver, that's ESC off. Now every traction control system, stability control system is off. You are completely on your own when driving this car. Um, and I've, I've only used it maybe like one time. And to be honest with you, I don't feel experienced enough to drive a car like this on public roads, at least drive it hard without having any kind of help. And I mean, many Ferrari owners might not even admit to that, but I do. This car is extremely powerful and I have huge amounts of respect for 
uh, the power that it has, especially days like this. I mean, we're, this is January 2nd. We're lucky enough to have 52 degrees outside, but uh, yeah, I mean, it can get kind of slippery around this time of year. So I usually keep it in race. Now, one thing that I wanted when I bought this car was that it should have a backup camera, which it does. It's this extremely ugly button right here. It looks like a, I don't know, a hat or something. You push that and it actually has a front camera as well. Two different settings. This feature is great, especially since the F12, you see how the hood slopes down. I mean, it's a front engine car, but the engine sits so far back, so it's actually behind the front axle here but it gives the F12 such a long hood, so it can be hard to measure, let's say, a curb if you pull into a parking spot. So I'm very happy that my F12 has a front camera and a backup camera. Now the button next to it is the front lift system. So it's a one button push, which is very nice, unlike in some McLarens where it's like a four button click type operation to get the lift to come up, which can be kind of stressful. Let's say you're pulling into a gas station or something on the side of the road and it has a steep incline. You don't want to have to click like four buttons and stop traffic. You want to just click one button, have it go up quickly so you don't scrape your front splitter. And then we have the air duct vents here, which are actually pretty cool. You can just move them around manually. We got three of them. Now, one thing uh, about this car, and that's uh, a typical Ferrari-ism, I guess, where it's just a finicky car. Sometimes when I turn the car on, only one of these vents will work. So what I figured out that you have to do is turn the car off, turn it back on again, and then they'll work. Now for many people watching a video like this, they're like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, and you're not wrong. But the second thing is, uh, you just gotta get used to stuff like this. That's it's part of owning an exotic. They are finicky. They'll do weird stuff sometimes that there's no explanation for whatsoever, and you just gotta learn to live with it. And just like that, we're in the passenger seat because before we take it out on the road, I'm gonna show you guys one last feature here that is a really cool feature depending on how you look at it. If you have a scared wife, kind of like I do, it's not really all that optimal, but this is an optional feature for F12s. And I happen to have it. It is the passenger display. So the passenger can actually see the RPMs and also the speed that the driver is doing. And it's just a pretty cool feature. <laughs> But the best part about owning this car is, as it should be, is to drive it. And it's just amazing. Listen. <laughs> I will never, ever, ever, ever get sick of this sound. In my opinion, an F12 with a catless exhaust from a proper exhaust manufacturer, it's the best sounding car in the world. There's no V12 that sounds like a Ferrari V12. It, it's just not. You just want to do pulls all the time. <laughs> now, this is a very short underpass. Very, but you don't need much. Listen to this. It just never gets old. That is the most amazing sound. Whew. It sounds like a pure F1 car at, at certain RPMs, especially if you're in a tunnel. I, you, you just can't, you can't beat it. I had to make a U-turn. Here we go. <laughs> I, mean, I swear to you, if you own a car like this, the 9,000 ish around somewhere that this exhaust cost from FI. It is worth every penny. All right, so the naturally aspirated V12 is made it to a seven speed dual clutch transmission that is just phenomenal. It shifts instantly and it is just perfectly mated to this car.
Now when spring finally arrives again in the state of Pennsylvania where I live, I'm gonna do some proper performance tests in this car. Ferrari states that it does zero to 60 in stock format in 3.1 seconds. It's a rear wheel drive car. It always comes down to obviously being able to put the power down to the ground. Now quarter mile times have been done in stock F12s in under 11 seconds. So it'd be very interesting to see how this car actually performs in the proper temperature with proper grip in the tires. I can actually check and see what the tire temperature is. And currently it says 71 degrees. Summertime, I'm driving around, the tires are 100 degrees. This isn't really a winter car, but it, it's just such a joy to drive. It handles so well for a 3,900 pound car. With me in it, it's 4,100. But when you lean into the turns, it, the steering is very direct. Some people say it's too light. I, I don't think so. I, I think it's just perfect for this car. The car had 8,600 miles on it when I bought it. It currently has 14,070 miles. And it's just so comfortable. My wife and I have been on rallies. I have plenty of headroom here. Again, I'm six foot two. It is such a good GT car. I know it's kind of loud. Turn the valves off while we're talking here. Maybe you guys can hear me better. <laughs> I just always drive around with the valves open. It's just amazing. So the valves are currently closed. Still sounds great, but it's just not even close to being as loud. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes away half the fun, so I'm gonna open them back up. And I think you can kind of understand why I want to keep that exhaust valve open by the previous clip. So what we're going to do now is some just POV action so you can see what it's like. <laughs> this thing pulls like a monster. I also love these LED shift lights that you get on top of the steering wheel. Everything is pretty much designed for you to have your hands at nine and three. We got the turn signals, obviously the suspension button. We got the shift paddles right here. Oh, the downshifts. <laughs> it is such a joy to drive this car. Gas mileage, not that it really matters in a car like this, but gas mileage in the F12 isn't too bad on the highway. Now I'll admit, I haven't you know, done a pure calculation, but just from experience and how much of gas I put in and how far I've been able to drive it on a tank of gas, I wouldn't be surprised if I can get around 18 on the highway, but that's 730 plus horsepower. Now if you start doing the type of driving we just did, it's, I don't know, seven? <laughs> But it doesn't really matter because it's just so much fun. It's so much passion to drive a car like this. Now another thing that makes owning this car so special is automakers, they're not making naturally aspirated V12s anymore. Now granted, uh, Ferrari came out with an 812 after the F12 here, but I don't really know what's gonna happen after the 812, are they going to make another Grand Tour with a naturally aspirated V12? I don't know. So I'm conflicted. I mean, in a perfect world, I want to keep this car forever. I don't really have any plans of getting rid of it anytime soon. Because honestly, I have no idea what could replace this car. I love naturally aspirated engines and the, the way the power delivery and the power band is in this car is like anything I've ever experienced. 
a turbo car, let's say like a 488, will have a lot more low end torque. And it doesn't have this. <laughs> a 488 can't hang its right nut next to an F12. It just can't. This is just, it's the experience of driving this car. It's, it's amazing. Now Lamborghini's equivalent to the F12 is the Aventador. Now, granted, an Aventador by looks has a lot more curb presence. It's just an amazing car all around. But this is a fuller package in my opinion. It's practical, it's fast, it sounds amazing, it looks amazing. It, it's just the perfect supercar. So, with my first eight months of supercar ownership in the bag, specifically Ferrari F12, I'm hoping it's going to be a whole lot longer than that. And I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm sure I've forgotten a million things that I wanted to mention, but I think I covered the most important things. And just like that, I'm back at uh, my old place of work where the whole channel started, Moon Township Ford. It wasn't really a plan uh, in this video, but here I am. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.